Good morning, everyone. How are you doing on this beautiful Ohio day? Tell you what, we got one heck of a storm this weekend and everything is greening up. So we're on a little bit of a hunt. Now, I'm not sure if there's any in here, but I'm gonna look around for what I'm looking for and see if we can find it. So if you remember, we set one of the trophy rocks right here, one of the salt licks, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> that's all that's left of it. Literally, that's it. That's insane. Anyways, obviously I got a chainsaw so I'm sure you guys put two and two together that I'm looking for a piece of wood. I was looking around here, everything that's pretty much on the ground is pretty rot. Nothing really good left in it. Got this one here kind of hanging. Look at that, pulled the whole root up. I know that wasn't like that last year because it's still green up there too. So that had to have just happened. Everything I thought that was back here that I was gonna be able to use is just a little either too small or too rotten. Ooh, bug flew right in my ear. Hmm. Yeah, see this one looks too rotten too. That one don't look too bad, but it's just not big enough. Here's another big boy leaning. Wow, look at that thing. A couple of them. I've really haven't even explored this area a whole lot other than deer hunting. And wow, that's a big tree. Two of them. This one's broke off. It's rotten. So I'm talking about this one here. That's a big boy. And this one here. That's a big boy. You can't even see where the top goes. Kind of gives you an idea <laughs> of how big it is. This is a big one. The tree's been here a long time. Hopefully it'll be here a lot more longer, longer than me. So this is the one I saw from a distance. It's just too rotten. All right, I'm gonna come back in one moment once I walk back out of here to the truck. I was scouring all around this area. I lost my saw for a second. The sun's peeking through. Can you guys see the saw anywhere? I'll give you a hint. I set it at the base of this tree stump where we found the salt lick or where we put the salt lick. I was looking all over. I'm like, how the heck do you lose the saw? It's a bright orange thing. Well. It was right here. <laughs> that sun just opened up a little bit more and changed the whole look in here. If you don't know, woods can be very deceiving. You can get lost in them real easy. This one here was not a success. So check this out real quick. Bunch of water, I told you we got a good rain. So this is the first time I've had this happen since we did the drain. So if you remember, we came in here last year, Noah, and we cut this drain and we can see it wash that whole line out down through here. I mean, that's just a ton of gravel. I don't even, that gravel must've just came off the road. Look at this. I mean, just a ton of it. Just all the way up through there. Anyways, our rock, rip wrap, whatever you want to call it, did its job. You see all this here? This is exactly what we were hoping for. 
stop that from going down into our tube even though it pushed a rock down in there this is what we wanted so I'm gonna probably get back over here another day this week I don't think we had any more rain in the forecast but get that cleaned back out a little bit yeah did its job 100% that was well worth it I'm here at my temporary for now wood yard area at some point we'll have our own permanent wood yard So I don't need it this big, so I'm going to take some of this off. So, per usual, ran out of memory. <laughs> so I don't know where I got into that cut at, but I cut a couple of the knots off simply just to clean them up a little bit. But I'm gonna get the skid loader and we'll get loaded up and get back to the house and get working on what we're doing. All right, I got two food grade, 55 gallon, I believe they were, uh, containers. These actually came from Cleveland, Ohio, from a restaurant. I'm assuming probably a, a big restaurant because they had olives in them and I already rinsed them. They've been sitting out back for a few days, uh, but yeah. If you guys haven't put it together just yet, stay tuned. I'm, uh, oop, there went the seal. And if you don't know, chicken feed and everything, which right now during the summer, we don't have to buy much because they just forage. But uh, in the winter time, they can consume some grub. And I think each bag now is running us roughly about 20 bucks a bag. That's roughly 50 pound. So anywhere we can save, I'm all about that because once we move all the chickens to the property one day, I plan on really expanding the chicken side of things to get a lot of them. Uh, this is just simply going to make it easier for us to maintain them uh, so that we don't have to continue going out there every single day, filling up the water trough, filling up the feed, uh, you know, the uh, gravity fed feeders. This will allow us to you know, I don't know exactly how long. Some people said a month and a half, two months. 
I guess it'll really depend on how hungry they are summer versus winter time. I'm sure it'll differ quite a bit. I have watched a lot of YouTube videos. So big shout out to everybody that's kind of done something similar. I'm pretty much a pro now. So the concept is drill the holes here. This pops in and the chicken will be able to come up and stick their head in here and eat it. And the little bee on it, nothing can get into it. Uh, rain wise, weather wise, and yeah. So you don't want this to be like flush. Uh, you know, you need a little bit of a curve here so the feed just don't fall right out whenever you fill it up. So you don't know, these are called wrist breakers. So I'm gonna be as careful as possible here. Don't mind my butt sweat either. Now I'm going to put my hip into it. You shove this baby in here. I think I got to get different pipe. This is a four inch cutting wheel and it's four inch true to the inside, but I need the outside of this pipe to go into this hole and there ain't no way. I mean, I'm like looking down there. I mean, all the way around, probably a quarter inch I need to take off pretty close all the way around. So that kind of stinks. Well, I got to make a trip to the store and it's pretty darn late. So uh, yeah, we'll continue this video in one minute for you guys, but probably be the next day for me. So this project started yesterday morning. TQ approached me while I was sipping my second cup of coffee, possibly my third or fourth. And she said, Dad, yeah. I did not call him Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Take two. Yeah. <laughs> Let me recover here. I don't call him Daddy. <laughs> hey, Daddy. Okay, stop. I got focus here. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm not gonna be able to cut this. Anyways. <laughs> I said, right. babe. Babe, I need you to make me something for the chickens. <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, I got that. It might take six to 10 years, but I'm gonna get it done. Just kidding. Anyways, so I set off on an adventure to buy everything I needed. I bought everything I needed, I thought. Long story short, Come back, TQ's like, nah, you bought all the wrong stuff after I figured out that I had already bought the wrong stuff because she went and watched the Barbie movie with Miley and some friends. Anyways, I went and bought the wrong stuff. So this morning, TQ went and bought the right stuff, we think. TQ did all the research on this. You know, I kind of just watched some YouTube videos with her. I was like, yeah, I can put some pipes in some tubes and, you know, <laughs> fill it with feed and water. Yeah, let's do this. Anyways, we're back, ready to attack. Let's get to it. Let's get to work, Daddy. Where the heck did that come from? Might have to do some fine tuning because not all the plastic comes off, but we'll see.
Always got to be that one, right? That's pretty much the basic concept. Yeah, this one is done. So I tried to skip a step and TQ's like, uh-uh. Anyways, it doesn't say you absolutely have to have caulking around these. They are pretty tight, but we're like, why not go ahead and do it? We have the caulking here already. So TQ is going to go ahead and caulk these babies up just to make sure if any rain does run down the barrel, it won't seep into here and run into our feed. So we got the feeder done. Now we're gonna do the waterer, okay? The way it looks, this should be pretty straightforward. So it's gonna be kind of just like the other one. And uh, yeah, we're gonna aim to get it as low as possible. So when the chickens come up and they're pecking at it and the water level comes down, we won't have a bunch sitting in the bottom. So we're gonna need some of these little uh, I was gonna say pecker things, but you know, uh, the chickens peck these and uh, I guess nipples, uh, call them whatever you want. Chicken water pecker nipple thingies. Anyways, yeah, there you go, TQ's got you. What do they call them, TQ? Poultry nipples. Yeah, some nipples. <laughs> got big jugs and nipples. So uh, yeah, we're gonna okay, put- Okay, daddy. We're gonna put the- we're going to put the nipples on the big jugs and uh, no rhyme or reason here really. Just uh, pretty straightforward. You need a 11-32nd drill bit, which I believe it says it converts to a half inch, but it's definitely not a half inch, I wouldn't believe. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to plug these all around this baby and we'll have 55 gallons of water and uh, this will at least work really well through the summertime and then... We'll have to figure out what we're going to do winter wise if we can modify this maybe with some heat heat tape or something insulate it so it doesn't freeze up that's always a problem if you don't know whenever you have any kind of animals that are outside like chickens goats anything your water freezes up we're in the midwest it gets cold here so let's get to it So they have these little rubber seals on the back and you just want to snug them up. You don't want to get crazy with the over tightening. What we're going to do now is actually take it out back and we're going to set them up and we're going to check them to see if any of them are leaking. If they are, we might just adjust them a little bit and uh, kind of go from there. But, or we can seal them up with some silicone. Yeah, something like that. 
All right, so after you drill those holes, you're gonna have a little plastic that goes inside the container. Don't forget to get that out, just so they're not running into your nipples and clogging them up. What do you think? Too tall for that one or this one? I think honestly it'd be too tall. This one? For food, yeah, here. All right, so went ahead and saved you guys the hole cutting process and went ahead and split them like TQ wanted. So, there's one. What do you think, TQ? I think that will be perfect height for the food for sure. And I'll put this one right here where this one's at. If I'd have known this yesterday, this could have saved me a few hundred pounds of carrying around. <laughs> Just kidding. The chickens won't mind having something else to climb on. Oh, yeah. See? They like it already. All right. <laughs> How level does that look? Do I need to spin it? Kind of looks a little this way. Yeah. that look? That looks better. All right. So as you can see, six is pretty much what it is. I'm good with that. As of right now, we have no leaks on the water. We're probably about halfway. We'll see as the pressure goes up, if we get any leaks around it. All right, guys, so this is so awesome. 300 pounds of feed in one container. If you come take a look at the general idea here, basically, you got the feed right in there. The chickens peck their head right in there, grab the feed, eat, eat what they can. And yeah, and this here, this kick out here kind of keeps the weather from going into it. Yeah, I'm very impressed with this. You did a phenomenal job, Daddy. I love it. <laughs> Looks good, looks good, looks real good. So while we're waiting for the water to continue filling up, we kind of just step back and let the chickens, you know, do their thing. They're very curious creatures. And uh, yeah, we knew they were gonna be a little bit weary because this has not been in their cage ever. But after a little while, maybe five, 10 minutes, they started warming up to it. I uh, probably got another two to three minutes. What's nice is it's taken probably about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to fill up. 
But if you come down here, our chickens are gonna have to learn these. But the way this works is they come up and they basically just peck it with their, their mouth. And as you see that water's coming out, that's what happens right there. This, as they tap it, peck at it, the water comes out. All right, we're about to the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. 55 gallons of fresh well water right from the ground. If you don't know, good feed and clean water is gonna produce the best eggs. Oh yeah, we got it full, full. <laughs> I forgot that lid goes down in a couple inches. <laughs> we'll just know it's nice and clean. Oh, I must have had it on a little crooked. Anyways, check that out. Now, I could even take this further if I wanted to, and I could put this kind of near the house, and I could run a gutter with a downspout right into this, so if it rains, it fills it up itself. I've seen people do that. That might be something we do eventually. And uh, yeah, this is just one more step in us getting more efficient with our birds here. Right now we have about 20. Our plan is to have about 50 at some point, and it will be able to provide enough chicken eggs for most of our family, uh, you know, the kids as they get older and for ourselves and then as they age out we'll just you know harvest the bird themselves they typically get a good three to five years you know depending but yeah hope you guys enjoyed today's video i hope tq's happy with her new feeders i am very happy she doesn't have to fill it up every single day anymore and uh yeah i think the chickens are pretty happy i think they like the wood chips more than anything right now but yeah hope you guys enjoyed it as always we'll see you tomorrow have a good day